Hi, I'm Nick Palmashano, and this is the Bad News Network. I'm going to start BNN this week by telling you that my West Point classmate, Andrew Morgan, is less than 24 hours away from launching into space to spend nine months aboard the International Space Station. We are just crossing the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, and there is a huge and exciting newfound desire to get back into space exploration. This is an awesome time to be alive. I am fired up. I think that an investment in space exploration is the single greatest thing that America could spend time doing over the next 25 years. If I die before there's a colony on Mars, I'm gonna be super pissed. Mankind is at its absolute best when it's trying to do the impossible. The innovation and human advancement that came from the first space age is unparalleled. Plastics, memory foam, dialysis, water purification, computer advancement, the list goes on and on and on and is 1400 items long and that's just the things that came in addition to the core functions involving rocketry and different types of materials. These are game changing technologies that simply wouldn't exist if we didn't reach for the stars. And there's also that tiny little fact that no matter how smart we think we are, if we stay as a one planet species, we're eventually going to be wiped out. Dinosaurs were the top of the heap for a lot longer than we've been around, and then poof, gone. Okay, it wouldn't really have been poof, it would have been more like... <sighs> But maybe more importantly, in the short term, we just need something to collectively believe in again. I want to see that moment where the next Neil Armstrong touches down on Mars, where the first colony on the moon opens for business, and where kids are once again looking up at the sky in wonder at what could possibly be. To me, the best America isn't forged out of political argument, but by brilliant people working together to create a world that has never existed. And deep down, well, really, really deep down, I'm an optimist, and I know we're gonna get there again. So Artemis, the follow-on mission from Apollo, is kicking off. We're gonna build a communication station on the dark side of the moon so that we can reach out further than we ever have been able to before. We're also building a refueling station so that we have a place to kick off lunar missions. It's time for the next giant leap. Anyway, enough optimism. Let's go back to our regularly scheduled scum and villainy. A French inventor and former jet skiing champion, Frankie Zapata showcased his flyboard in front of a host of people and government officials on Bastille Day. Originally designed to work over water, the hoverboard now allegedly has the ability to take off and fly at speeds of up to 118 miles per hour. Zapata! The Laredo Police Department in Tennessee arrested a man for drug charges this week. Upon entering the man's home, they discovered him trying to flush 12 ounces of meth and 24 fluid ounces of liquid meth down the toilet. Following the arrest, the police department posted a statement on Facebook asking people not to flush their meth or other drugs down into the sewer systems. They explained that ducks, geese, and other fowl frequent their treatment ponds and they shudder to think what one hyped up on all that meth would do. Furthermore, they emphasized that if it made it further down the river, they could create meth gators. This is kind of like the way Godzilla was created, but instead of a hulked out nuclear iguana, we're going to get a rail thin alligator with an evaporating chin, and that's just messed up. The police did make a play for the laziest police work ever when they offered their assistance in helping anyone with an abundance of meth to dispose of it properly. According to recent reports, an Iranian drone was shot down in the Strait of Hormuz this week by an American carrier. Trump stated that the drone, identified as Iranian, ignored multiple stand down orders before it was shot down. Iran, however, said, Drone? What drone? We didn't lose any drone. You probably shot down one of yours. Which is basically the I am rubber, you are glue defense when it comes to international politics. I miss the days when the only droning that was happening in this world was at Ranger School and when Charlie Brown's teachers were talking. Also, beast. Fine, yes. Male honeybees are also referred to as drones. So I guess my closing statement there was technically incorrect. The cornerstone of all life on the earth. A Catholic bishop from Buenaventura, Colombia, has announced his intentions to drop gallons of holy water over the city from a helicopter 
to exorcise the demons responsible for the, all the violent crimes. Demons have stated that they are prepared and have been distributing umbrellas and raincoats and masks in order to stave off the deluge. One crossfitting demon has stated that he exercises regularly so he doesn't see what the big deal is. This week a vote was held in the United States House of Representatives to officially condemn President Trump's tweets as racist. Here's how this unfolded. You know what? I actually don't care at all. This is all political theater. Everyone knows who Trump is at this point, and everyone knows who the squad is. As tired as I am of their childish Twitter battles, I'm even more tired of everyone else going, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. You know they're gonna do it. They do it every week. These people are narcissists and do not care about you, so why are you spending all of this time caring about them? Have a whiskey and let the numbness wash over you like an adult. Now going back to Iran, oil tankers are having to hire private security firms because of all the hotness going around in the Strait of Hormuz. There are a host of security teams in the region, but they're only supposed to be working on counter piracy. Unarmed specialists don't face the same restrictions. Nevertheless, this is providing challenges because that type of security adds at least an additional $100,000 per trip. So shipping firms are either avoiding the area completely, even for things that they typically used to do like picking up marine fuel, or they're choosing very limited moments to enter the area. So let me throw a pitch out there. 80s movie style, we put a bunch of elite forces onto one of these tankers, the Iranians pull up, and then Schwarzenegger steps out and it's like, you're about to get tanked. Just think about it. Protesters and police clash this week in Puerto Rico as countless people are calling for the resignation of Puerto Rican Governor Ricardo Rosello. Puerto Rico's Center for Investigative Journalism blew the doors off the text chats between Rosello and his inner circle, which caused public outcry. And why? In those group chats, Rosello and his inner circle allegedly talk about manipulating the media and the local polls. They cover a wide spectrum of insults, covering a variety of different groups of sexual orientation, race, and gender, and they also joke about shooting the mayor of San Juan. One of the more anger-inspiring comments came from the governor's CFO, who joked about the bodies piling up after Hurricane Maria. Needless to say, people are pissed. So this week, and with the help of high-powered names like Ricky Martin, people took to the streets and demanded that he step down. This quickly escalated into protesters bursting through police barriers and police dispersing them with tear gas. The people of Puerto Rico have been through a lot in the last few years, and a scumbag politician probably isn't the worst that they have to survive. If I've learned one thing from Puerto Rican women over the years, it's that if you piss them off, they will burn your world to the ground. So Rosello and company has that going for them. News feeds have been flooded with geriatric pictures of family and friends this week as FaceApp has once again gone viral. It didn't take long before people started asking themselves, where are my pictures and data actually going? The answer, Russia, or at least a Russian firm. The hot new old buzzword for global bad guy since the Cold War. CEO Yaroslav Goncharov explained in the vaguest of details what occurs to your data and photos once the app collects them. Does the app take all of the photos off your phone? No. Does the app digitally map your face and hand it over to the Russian government? Of course not, but it could because you've signed away your right to have that happen. Now for those that misunderstand here, he literally said this, he said no we're not doing this but legally it can because of the irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty free, worldwide, fully paid, transferable, sub-licensable license. This is like licenseception. Does the app share user data with any third parties? No, except for Facebook and AdMob. Uh, you know, a, a data mining company. Where have we seen this kind of thing before? So in short, the answer to your question about is your privacy being invaded is no. Of course not, but yes. But also let's be honest, if you're using Facebook, they already have your damn face mapped anyway. Anybody anywhere, even if I don't know them, can post a picture of me and Facebook instantly asks me, hey, do you want this picture added to your timeline? That happens even if they haven't tagged me. Privacy is dead, people. Chill out. Just let your robot overlords take over. And finally, in Florida Man News, 49-year-old Alex Bonilla was arrested after chopping off his neighbor's penis. Bonilla had allegedly discovered that his neighbor across the street was having sex with his wife. He then went into his neighbor's house, held the man at gunpoint, cut his penis off, and then sprinted down the street. 
His neighbor is alive, but hospitalized. Police stated that this was a hard case to handle, but that erecting a framework for a motive was cake. No matter how you slice it, though, everyone involved in this story is a real dick. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano, and this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and if you live in the Tampa, Florida area, I'm going to be hosting an event for Casey Affleck's new movie. If you are a veteran, active military, first responder, or the families of any of those people, you get free tickets. Come check it out. It's going to be awesome.